Good evening. Welcome to the Northampton City Council meeting of September 17, 2015. Um, I'm City Council President Bill Dwight, uh, imitating uh, Barry White. Uh, but I will be presiding this evening. Um, and as per our custom, we're going to open with an opportunity for the public to speak. You're not constrained by topic, but we ask you to conform and comport to uh, the decorum of the chambers, uh, speak respectfully, and keep your comments under three minutes. And when you come up to speak, please identify yourself and give us your, your address. And the first person I have signed up, why well, it's Jasper Lopiansky. So as previously stated in these chambers, my name is Jasper Lopiansky and I live at 43 West Street. Um, I, uh, I believe it was a couple of months ago, I sent an email to the mayor, to members of the council. The mayor's office forwarded it to the DPW. There's a section of sidewalk as you walk from Main Street up the hill towards the Forbes Library where the concrete has been corroded. At the time, I, I wrote and I took pictures to, to demonstrate that it had been corroded down to the rebar. Um, Needless to say, the Department of Public Works has not done anything to remedy the situation yet. The reason I'm bringing it up again is because today, for the first time, I noticed that not only is the, the uh, iron steel rebar within the concrete visible, it is now protruding perhaps maybe an inch or so. And so it makes me wonder, on the one hand, why something like that can't be remedied relatively quickly, since it does clearly pose a danger, I think, to the public. Um, needless to say, you, if you're in a wheelchair or otherwise disabled, you actually can't use the only sidewalk that accesses the library. But just as far as safety or even liability is concerned, I think it would be interesting. Um, and I understand that the DPW has a process. I understand that there's, there's a list. You do this problem in the order it was presented. There ought to be a way for something that poses an active safety risk to members of the public, and, and a lot of them, for something like this to be elevated, to jump the stack, in, in, the, in the language of former Occupy Wall Street, to um, be elevated in consciousness, as the hippies I hang out with say. I think it could be done. I don't think it would be expensive, by the way. Um, perhaps we could have asked Smith College to do it while they were doing the sidewalk across the way, um, but that didn't happen. Um, and if the, the DPW and the executive branch can't do that, um, this council appropriates money for a lot of things. I think they could appropriate $100 to buy a couple of bags of concrete at Home Depot and put it in. Maybe that's the solution. That's all I have to say for tonight. Thank you very much. Um, that's all we have signed up. Is anyone else interested in speaking this time? No? Then I'll ask the administrative assistant to call the roll, please. <coughs> Councillor Adams. Here. Councillor Carney. Here. Councillor Dwight. Here. Councillor Klein. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor O'Donnell. Here. Councillor Shera. Here. Councillor Spector. Here. We have a quorum, so we may convene. Um, there, uh, there are no public hearings scheduled for today. Well, does the mayor have any communications that he wishes to impart? Well, by God, he does. Okay. That looks like a parchment. Yeah, I have one communication. It's it's a day late, but I had uh, pledged that I would uh, present this at a city council meeting. Um, this was a uh, proclamation that I issued yesterday uh, at the request of, um, of some interested citizens, including Judge Ryan, um, entitled Caleb Cooley Dickinson Day. Um, and it was September 16th, 2015. Whereas the time has come to honor Caleb Cooley Dickinson, an industrious and humble shoemaker, farmer, and lifelong bachelor with solid business judgment and prudent investment decisions that raised him from the depths of poverty to the heights of prosperity. 
And whereas Caleb Cooley Dickinson has been largely ignored as a man because of his reputation for being eccentric and strange for his time, living miserly, and having little relationship with neighbors or family. And whereas upon his death on September 16, 1882, Cooley left the majority of his estate, valued at $100,000, to create a hospital for the, for the, quote, sick poor, unquote, of Northampton, Hatfield, and Waitley, and disinheriting his family. And whereas Cooley's family challenged this will and destroyed his reputation by attempting to prove him insane in a <coughs> two-week trial that made public every detail of Cooley's life and that was labeled as crazy and bizarre, and whereas Cooley's legacy was insured when the will was upheld, but the man who had a penchant for wearing women's hat in public and who sought treatment for a mental illness essentially disappeared as a person, being replaced in name only as an institution. And whereas if alive today, Caleb Cooley Dickinson would be considered a generous philanthropist, worthy of our respect, admiration, and appreciation. And now, therefore, I, Mayor David Jane Arquist, do hereby proclaim September 16, 2015, to be Caleb Cooley Dickinson Day, and invite citizens uh, to don festive hats as a celebration of his life and legacy, accepting and embracing our long-neglected benefactor. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the seal in the city of Northampton. Um, so um, I, this was, I, I believe we're going to be working with Cooley Dickinson next year to do a little bit more of a public celebration. Um, I did greet uh, a delegation led by Judge uh, Ryan um, of, of gentlemen wearing festive hats uh, for the occasion. So, um, that, so mark your calendar for next September 16th. I believe Judge Ryan also contributed a very interesting piece in the Gazette on this. He did. He also yeah. wrote an, an editorial, sort of an extended version of this history. It's actually... It's fascinating, it's great, and it's interesting to note that if Mr. Cooley Dickinson were in Northampton today, he'd pass with barely notice mm -hmm. and a nod. Yes. Okay. Uh, and um, the only other communication I wish to offer was just a further update. I know at, my, at the last meeting I provided the um, council with an update on the, um, on the disposition of the Fiker School property, and the school committee was poised to have a meeting um, following your last meeting. Um, they did have a very full discussion of the building. Um, they have asked the superintendent and the um, and myself in, in my capacity as chair to um, put together a draft of what an RFP might look like for a um, for a lease uh, that would extend until August of 2019. So that is um, being drafted. Um, the school committee will still have to take that up and take a vote. Um, at which point. If they did proceed with a surplus order like that, I would bring it to the city council. Um, and so um, I will tell the council, I know that I gave you a preview of some of the other options that I'm looking at simultaneous to that for the Parks and Rec Department. Um, I will be bringing forward, probably as early as your next meeting, a more full discussion of that because we will need to um, begin moving forward uh, with financial orders um, in order to begin the design and planning for um, for a new site for the Parks and Rec Department. So um, hopefully by the next time I come before you, I'll have more of an update on that. So that's my only other communication tonight. Okay. Any questions on those points? Okay. Um, one minute announcements. Councilor Barge. Yeah. Um, I've put a flyer on each one of the counselor's desks, and I just want to let you know that there will be a informational meeting solar on the landfill Tuesday, September 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. at Ryan Road School Gym, 498 Ryan Road, Florence. Mayor Narkowitz and I will host an informational meeting for residents to hear about Amoresco's proposed solar array on the former Glendale Road landfill. A copy of the proposal is available at www.northamptonmass.gov. And I've been getting a lot of calls because I went and delivered to, uh, 250 flyers around the perimeter of the landfill. And so many people are really happy about this. So I'm hoping that we do get a lot of people to come. Anyone else? Um, oh, go ahead. Councilor Donald, Council Chair. 
that. Okay. Um, on Sunday, October 4th, from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, will be the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association's annual meeting. Um, some of the highlights will be a presentation from Martha Lyon, a landscape architect, who will be talking about restoring uh, Bridge Street Cemetery or ideas for doing so in the future. Um, there will be representatives from <coughs> many local groups, including uh, the Northampton Community Arts Trust, Historic Northampton, um, Nurseview Association, Meadow City Conservation Coalition, Cutchin Center, and also there will be ice cream from Harold. So if you don't go to this, I think you should just completely reevaluate your life and ask what are <laughs> you doing with your time, uh, because this will be a great event. Uh, again, Sunday, October 4th, 2 o'clock, and I didn't tell you where it is, uh, the Senior Center at 67 Con Street. Uh, the Hotel Northampton workers that are organizing for a union election are having a speak out and party tomorrow, um, tomorrow, September 18th at 7 p.m. at the courthouse lawn. And then I think they're moving to the foundry a little bit later. Um, so, and that's in anticipation of their election on Tuesday. So, if you want to go out and support them, that's where they'll be. I have. Um uh, an invitation to join in the Pulaski Day Parade that uh, commemorates General Pulaski, and that is on Monday, October 12th. We're, uh, the counselors are invited to participate in the parade. Uh, with this, uh, in years past, it's, the parade is terminus point was Pulaski Park, and because Pulaski Park's under renovation this time, um, they will be uh, terminus, I think, is at Lampern Park. Um, Although I'm not sure where we rally, but we, I will make I will find that out and it'd be great. Uh, <coughs> they expect some participation from us. I have already committed. Anyone else who's interested, and we do have the banner. In fact, the mayor won't be able to march unless we march with the banner because his name's on the banner too. And if it doesn't show up, then he won't be recognized. So we have that cross to bear. Council of Barge. Yes, I think I'm a favor, Councilor. Doesn't that state something about there is a mass there's on a King mass. Street like last year? But I think that's where they're going to be gathering around that area and then walking up to. So, unfortunately, the Richmond. mass is, is listed here. You're right. It says the day begins with a memorial mass at a local church um, starting at 10 a.m. I, I think we need a little more specificity, but I would imagine it's the uh, same. But that's what we did last year. Right. Good. All right, we're near where Blida used to be. Got it. For those of you who don't know, we'll, we'll get you directions. Are there any other uh, one minute announcements? Okay, no license petitions. I would accept the motion, of course, though, for approval of the Check minutes of September 3rd, 2015. There has been a motion made. Second. Second. Any discussion on the minutes? All, them all those in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Um, we're actually going to have a relatively brief recess for final. Today, I believe. We just have two items, right? We'll zip right through. Okay, so I, uh, we're in recess, and Council Murphy, uh, as chair, will preside over the finance committee. So, Pam, can you call the roll for finance, please? Council Murphy. Here. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Here. Councilor Here. First, we have to minutes from two meetings, August 25th and September 1st. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, and then two financial orders. The first one is 15.449 in order to adopt Mass General Law Chapter 71, Section 71E. On the recommendation of the Mayor, the City Council hereby accepts the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter, 61, chapter 71, Section 71E, which allows monies received by the School Committee from the Conduct of Adult Education and Continuing Education Programs, Summer School Programs, and Community School Programs, or from use of school property to be held in a separate account to be expended by the school committee without further appropriation for the purpose of program or programs from which the receipts were derived or towards expenses incurred in making school property available for such uses. Do we have a motion for discussion? Second. Second. 
Okay. Discussion? Oh, the mayor's going to explain it. I, just the school committee voted on this at their last meeting. The school business administrator um, asked for us to accept this uh, provision of Mass General Law, and I think the order's fairly um, self uh, self descriptive. It's a it's a, a law. It's a section that allows you to set up basically a revolving fund, a reserve fund for these types of fees that are that are spelled out: the adult education, continuing education and other community school progr programs. But this is not like the other, this is not truly a revolving fund because yeah, you don't have to keep approving it. And yeah, it's a different it section of Mass General Law that's specifically for school districts. Um, so, so we do have to approve it with the rest of the revolving funds every year? Uh, no, once, no. Yeah, once up, we do it, it's it stays, done. And then it stays in, there in those funds, but it has to be used for those uh, purposes, yeah. And how much money are we talking about typically? <clears throat> Yeah, they don't have. It's a, they're starting new with this program, so they don't actually have a lot in the fund right now. Um, I, I think you know, in the order of thirty to forty thousand dollars. I think <coughs> that's what it is. But I, I, I can check on that. All right. Questions from finance committee or anyone? No, no questions. All, right. all in favor of a positive recommendation? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> and the. Uh, Let's see, next is financial order to reprogram funds for Jackson Street School stair repair project. This is 15.479. Upon the recommendation of the mayor, whereas city council approved $40,000 for the repair of Jackson Street School stairs as part of the FY16 capital plan and bids for the project were $43,800. And whereas uh, there are two projects that have funds remaining after project completion that can be used to supplement the budget for these repairs. Order that $1,642.91 be reprogrammed from the balance of the Jackson Street School title HVAC replacement project and $2,518.27 be reprogrammed from the balance of the NHS parking lot repair project for the purpose of providing additional funds for the repair to the Jackson Street School stairs. We have a motion on this? Make a motion. Second? Second. Second. Discussion on this one? <coughs> Any uh, comment, Mr. Mayor? No, just this was a project that was part of the capital uh, budget in the FY16 budget. It's actually on page 170 of your budget book. Um, it was for the front and rear entrance. When they um, did go out the bids, they actually determined that they wanted to add a handicapped ramp for the rear. Um, stairway because there was no currently no re, uh, handicap ramp or handicap access at the rear of the building so that design mo modification was made and the bids came in a little bit higher so that's why we want to transfer this fund so we can get the project completed yeah. no more discussion no all in favor of Aye. positive recommendation Aye. 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 great all right and uh, then the last one is 15.5 authorized payment of a prior year bill for city uniforms. On the recommendation of the mayor, the council authorizes payment of $500, I'm sorry, $315.53 in prior, prior fiscal year bills, that would be 2015, from the Department of Public, or for, from the DPW for the vendor who supplies uniforms to the DPW. So again, it's $315.53 from FY15 for uniforms to the DPW. Do we have a motion on this one? Second. Any discussion on this one? All in favor of a positive Aye. recommendation? Aye. 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 Great. Any new business for finance? Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right. We convene back in regular session then. Um, we need to uh, address the minutes of uh, various committee meetings. Uh, first, we, first up, we have the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances for June 15, 2015 is amended and August 10, 2015 is our motion. To approve. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion on these minutes? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any objections? Next up is the appointment of uh, Christine Bissell as treasurer slash collector, positive recommendation from the Committee on Rules, Orders, and Appointments, and Ordinances. And then Paul. Uh, in my absence, uh, you guys approve of the, the <coughs> joining of these two positions. And now we need to fill that position, and the mayor is recommending uh, Chris Bissell. So I'll accept the motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion on this nomination? I, I, I think it's worth noting that Chris actually has. Uh, 
If you look, has a rather impressive resume, has functioned very well in her capacity as treasurer. So we're going, she's going to need all our support, and that's every person in the community as she tries to um, establish virtually a new position in the city. It, of course, it conforms with a lot of other communities in the state um, where, and I think Holyoke just did this too, or some other communities just recently combined their, uh, their treasurer uh, and collector's positions. And so um, Chris, I believe, is an excellent choice. Uh, and I'm glad that you did come forward with the recommendation. And just a note for the record, Ms. Bissell did appear before the ordinance uh, committee in, in person. And um, you know she obviously received a positive recommendation for the reasons you state. So she's not here tonight, but she did come to the committee. Councilor LaBarge. Uh, when this came into city council about Christine, um, being possibly appointed for treasurer collector. I talked about Christine and I support this appointment 100%. Well, with that said, uh, all those in favor of the appointment of Chris Bissell as treasurer collector, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Unanimous approval. And now, these also come with positive recommendations from uh, the rules of appointments of ordinances. Uh, first, we have uh, from the Community Preservation Committee, we have Jack Finn of 57B King Street in Northampton. His term starts September 2015, expires June 2018. And that's the Conservation Commission representative. Uh, this will be a new appointment. And then also David Drake of 321 Locust Street in Northampton. His term starts also this month and expires June 2018. Also, he's the historical commission representative. This is a reappointment. Uh, why don't we take those first? I'll move to approve. Okay, there's a motion second. to approve those two appointments. Second. Uh, second. Any discussion? Oh. I actually saw them in their places just last night in this room, so they've already started hard at work on this. Uh, all those in favor of the appointment, please say aye. 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 And any opposed? And any abstentions? Next up for the Parks and Recreation Commission, we have Carol Bertrand, 65 Hastings Heights in Florence. So the term starts, started August 2015, expires June 2018. This is a reappointment. Uh, David Cronin, 103 Pioneer Knowles Extension in Florence. The term also started in August 2015, expires June 2016. This is also a reappointment. And then uh, Kristen Dardano of 281 El uh, Elm Street, Northampton, term to start. August 2015 expired June 2018. This is a new appointment this is to fill the expired term of Yvonne Keefe. And then uh, we have Thomas Dumphy of 6 Chesterfield Road in Leeds. Uh, term starts August 2015, expires June 2016. This is uh, Michael Laga, 4 Center Court, Northampton. Term to start August 2015, expires June 2017. And then Dan Smith of 597 West Hampton Road in Leeds. Same term, August 2015 to June 2017. This is reappointment. Is there a motion to, to move them all as a group? Or? Take them all as a group. Second. Okay. Any discussion on these? As I said, these all come with positive recommendations from ordinance. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Next up, we have uh, appointments to uh, committees. Also, positive recommendations from uh, the Committee on Rules, Orders, Appointments, and Ordinances. This is the Agricultural Commission. John O'Massa of 165 West Farms Road in Florence, uh, term to start this month and expire June 2018. He's a reappointment. Why don't we deal with that? Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion on the appointment? On the reappointment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Next up, the Central Business Architecture Committee. This is also a reappointment. Joseph Blumenthal, 39 Chapel Street in Northampton. Uh, the term, April 2015 to expire June 2018. Move to approve. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on this appointment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Uh, the Human Rights Commission. Jordana Amato of 28 Fox Farms Road in Florence. Um, the term to start 
April 2015, expires June 2018, so reappointment. And Lori Wiesel, 46 Grand Avenue, Northampton, uh, term to start uh, August 2015, expire 2017. New appointment. This is a new appointment to fill a vacancy. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions. And then last, but not least, Transportation and Parking Commission, Ann Brooks, 20 Bridge Road, number one, in Florence. Term starts August 2015, expires June 2017. And this is the Planning Board representative role. It's to fill the expired term of Devin Bruce. I'll accept a motion. Move to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion on the, on the appointment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, and that brings us to, uh, and by the way, I should point out, I, I watched the meeting last week from, from my sick bed, so I just want to let you know the, the last meeting. So I'm, I'm up to speed on the debate and the discussion, so, well, as much as I can be, given my limited capacity. But the, uh, we're, at uh, this item, we're at the contractor services for audit uh, of the city books and accounts. And uh, this is pursuant to Northampton City Charter Article 7, Section 6. And the City Council will consider the award of a contract providing for outside auditing of books and accounts of the City to be conducted by a certified public accountant or a firm of certified public accountants. This is a charge that has been established under the Charter, under the new Charter, and it is uh, for the public's uh, understanding, this is the first time we've done this. Uh, we've approved hiring of accounts, but we've never actually sought out and hired this is a new authority granted us and as such as per usual we stumbled our way through but we did it right we ultimately did it right and I and I think it's worth noting before we move this on the floor that I want all due credit to go to the administrative assistant who crafted one of the most professional RFPs uh, and <laughs> and pursued and did due diligence like no other in, in a complete absence of solid ground, because we had no solid ground. So she did that despite all the challenges, didn't wither from it, and uh, we benefited enormously. She's also made recommendations that uh, Councilor O'Donnell's included in some, an item that we'll be addressing uh, later, but uh, considering an audit review committee, a committee that, that will make us uh, more fulsome in our knowledge and understanding of this process. That needed saying. So, three cheers for the administrative assistant. Huzzah, huzzah. <laughs> um, I will, uh, I will, yeah, uh, Councilman? Put it on the floor. I'd like yeah. to recommend we contract with Scanlon Associates for audit services for the next three years. Second. <clears throat> Second on that motion. Uh, are there any, uh, now, well, uh, that is the motion that's on the floor, so let's discuss that motion. Um, would like to speak to that point. Councilor Donnell and Councilor Labarge, are you raising your I hand? I think Councilor Murphy wanted to speak on it. You want to speak first? No, no, Councilor. Okay. So Councilor O'Donnell first, then Councilor Labarge, and then Councilor Murphy. How's that? Okay. That's okay. Okay. Uh, we're not going to have a fight who speaks first. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm sure Councilor Labarge would get the last word. <laughs> um, I'd just like to offer an observation. I think part of the reason, <clears throat> excuse me, the council president points out that it was a little bit of an awkward meeting last, last time. Maybe awkward is the wrong word, but we certainly were um, exploring new territory and trying to get it right. And I thought about it, and I think perhaps one of the reasons why that was the case is I think we were sort of debating two issues simultaneously. And I'd like to just give you my opinion because it, it might be helpful in this process or it might not. but. Here it is. Uh, we weren't just debating which auditor to appoint. We were debating a whole philosophy about when we should rotate auditors. Uh, in effect, I think we were debating the rules in a, in a foreshadowing of the, you know, us debating the rules for real. Um, I think we actually need a policy. And um, I think the Finance Committee probably t uh, discussed this you know, in some form already at, at length. But I think we need a written policy and a good place for it would be in our rules. That answers the questions, when do we rotate auditors, under what circumstances, how do we review it once we do it. 
um, and so forth. So in a way, I think there's two separate questions. Part of me would rather that policy be decided first before deciding the auditor this year. But I also understand the need just to, to move forward in some fashion as well. Final thing I'll say to inform the debate is at the last council meeting, I asked the question if there's guidance um, from the Division of Local Services and the Department of Revenue. And the answer to that wasn't readily available. Um, but I, I Googled around, and there, there are some things that the state says about rotating auditors. And I did include, there's kind of three, a sheet with three paragraphs on it. I obviously won't read the whole thing, but um, from a, a basic fact sheet from the Division of Local Services, it says, um, in general, communities are encouraged to re-advertise for auditing services every five to eight years. And it takes this idea from um, an independent entity called the Government Finance Officers Association. Um, I also list two um, financial management reviews this department has done uh, for two different cities. Well, one city and one town. Actually, the council president referenced one that was done for Holyoke with regards to merging the treasurer and collector. So they do these assessments. And you know, for the city of Taunton and the town of Pembroke, they do make their recommendation. So these are some authorities. I, you know, I, as, as much as I trust just the basic debate among the council, I think we need, do need to rely on an authority. So those are some to consider. I don't think it's conclusive. I mean, the administrative assistant also provided an excellent review of what other towns have done. And many towns do just continue to use the same auditor year after year. But these are things we have to weigh, and I do think we need a policy ultimately. So thank you. Um, Council Labarge can, can I ask a question directly you, you related, question that if that would be okay? In the first part, you said that the, the recommendation is that the, the position of auditor is advertised. Does it say, does that imply in that, or does there a continuation say a new auditor, or that you advertise so that even your old auditor might file for that position, but it requires them to come up with a new RF, you know, a new answer to your RFP? Mm -hmm. So, it, in the the implication was when you first said it is if it would be a new auditor but it might just be your old auditor could apply but you put out an RFP and they have to come back and have competition about it is, is that yeah you're right that that's an important nuance I mean I think it certainly recommends com a competitive um, a advertising in a competitive way to get different options I don't think it would then mandate that a city or town choose one of the alternatives yeah. um, but I think my sense and others would know better. It seems like an evolving best practice to, from time to time, um, change auditors. But again, it's very murky because there is no consensus among the towns. That's what the research that our administrative assistant turned up. And in fact, that's what I see when I read various websites that the state, <laughs> that the state has up. Um, there's no definitive answer to that. So my answer is very unclear. So. Council LaVarge. Something. Okay, Murphy. No, I'll fill in the gap while you're thinking about it. Um, you know, the, the, and that's something that we may want to consider, and something you may want to throw back to finance, because you threw back to finance. You guys go look into this, come back to us, put out an RFP, review the people, come back to us and make a recommendation. Um, we, you know, which we did for the last meeting. But you may want to tell us, hey, go look into, you know, at what what would trigger us wanting to change auditors. You know, since I've been on the council, we've changed finance director, we've changed auditor, and now we've changed and combined treasurer and collector. So some of the personnel have changed around. But maybe you want to think, gee, do we want to change auditors when we get a new mayor? Or do we want to change auditors when we get a new finance director? You know, is there going to be some threshold that occurs where we say, you know, we want to, we want a new set of eyes, and, and that trips us to really seriously consider changing? And if you want to commission finance to look into that we we certainly could do that and and then come back with a recommendation yeah we think we change finance directors or mayors maybe that's the time that we switch auditors around uh, and, and take a new look at things but we're, you know that's something you may want to send to us we'd be happy to do that but you know that's the kind of policy I think the council is talking about where we just sort of decide okay we have a major change in either mayor or finance director the next time the contracts up we switch auditors. In, uh, now, as, as, you, as the administrative assistant actually pointed out in the last meeting correctly, mm -hmm. 
the deadline that we thought, the sort of damages <coughs> that we thought we were working under actually didn't exist. It was a figment of our misinterpretation. And as such, we actually have the room of flexibility to at least accommodate some of the questions you have. Mm -hmm. um, there is no pressure at this point because we have already <coughs> hired Scanlon um, for the next audit. The question is, going forward, does it make sense? And, and by the way, you know, just for purposes of discussion, my preference at this point uh, would be for a new auditor based on the information that I've been reviewing and discussing. But the fact is, I don't think we lose, to be honest. I'm more interested in the process because I don't think we lose. Regardless, we get qualified uh, accountant agencies that will provide us with robust and vigorous reporting that will do what we need it to do. What's more important as we thrash our way through this is to try and find the best process by which, as Council Murphy suggests and Council O'Donnell recommend, by which we do this. And so that we have embedded in place, a pro because this is a new uh, authority for us, we have embedded in place for succeeding councils that actually have a reference point and apply it in a way that makes sense. So possibly, and this is not, and I don't want this, I, I realize this might be straying a little off the motion, but there may be a consideration to refer this back to finance for, for an expanded discussion on, on the philosophy, as Councilor Gunn said. Mm -hmm. the, um, you know, the reason I brought up the changing of the other financial professionals is that, you know, at least in the private sector, that's often when they, they do things like that, when people change. And, you know, at no point, the people that we've changed to this point, <coughs> don't, you know, I don't think that actually triggers it. Um, you know, I, my, my suggestion would be that we focus, we, if we review it, that we focus on perhaps the mayor, the finance director. You know, when the department head or the mayor switches, maybe we think about switching. Uh, and, and to me, that's more a philosophical discussion that there's no real hurry on. You know, I understand the charter's deadline. If we didn't have an auditor for 15 by now, we'd better be getting around to hiring one because 15's closed. Um, for 16, the timetable might well be spring when they, they actually start, or beginning of the year or something like that. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really see any trouble in, ans in dealing with this motion now and then dealing with the philosophical down the road, gee, golly, what would trigger it in our own minds sometime in the future? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see it as something that we, we need to have that discussion right now, just my opinion. Council LaBarge. Yes. When we had that city council meeting two weeks ago and a couple of those councilors weren't happy about a situation that was occurring at this meeting, we did get some clarification from our city solicitor, Alan Seawald, to help us along with how we were feeling about a certain situation on the time involvement. And I think, have you read it, Councillor Dwight? Yes, I think I, you I, have. I to you. Yes, you did? Yeah. And it, you it looks with, uh, like it, we're not in a hurry with this, and this is what our city solicitor is stating that we have up until January, February, the deadline, I think March, somewhere in March. So I feel that why are we rushing this when we don't have to? I would like to see a process, a better one than what I saw in t two weeks ago, of bringing in both of the auditing companies and let all of us be able to ask them questions. And since we received the email from um, our council clerk, I would like to ask questions on both of the firms. So that's the way I feel about it right now. So I mean, if you want to vote on this tonight, that's fine. I'll vote where my heart says where to vote. Any other, the motion is approve Scanlon. Is there any other discussion on that motion? It's a preference roll call on this. For what now? Okay. Roll call. Roll call. So the question is approving Scanlon. Yes okay. approves, no does not. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight? No. Councillor Klein? No. 
Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Shera. No. Councillor Spector. Yes. Councillor Adams. No. Five yes. Five yes. The motion passes. Five yes, four no. Councilor Murphy. And and if council still, I think it's, you know, Councilor uh, O'Donnell's points taken. You know, if you want to send the finance, you know, we've approved a contract for a couple of years, years now, but sometime in that time frame for us to come back with a recommendation of what we might recommend as a threshold when, you know, if we have a change in finance director or mayor and the contract runs out, that, that we, that's when we recommend that we switch auditors. Um, we'd be very happy to look into that. So, one of uh, the proposals that you will see coming to your to uh, ordinance, <coughs> uh, one of the proposals that uh, actually the administrative assistant and research discovered that there are a number of communities in this similar situation. We we kept trying to reinvent the wheel, but they actually they had audit committees that that were that had members of the community who understood. Uh, sophisticated aspects of this that I don't think we're necessarily all possessing the, the perception that they have and make a combined citizen uh, uh, council committee that would help craft and do the crafting that you describe and then uh, you can do it within the context of finance or something but so Councillor O'Donnell actually has a proposal to that effect and he loves so subject to that review I think we can craft something that will do Precisely what you're describing, and that. Yeah. Yeah. So I should. Oh, yeah. Oh, by all means. Yeah. Oh, the, well, one thing I would point out, because I'm on several private audit committees, you know, as well as as on the council and finance. Um, this body works under Gadsby, which is the government accounting standards. Most private citizens do not work under Gadsby; they work under the the normal accounting standards. And uh, every accountant I've talked to that doesn't work under Gadsby. You know, it makes their head hurt to think about Gadsby. So, you know, if we go if we go to the private sector, we want to look for people private sector that have Gadsby experience because it's apples and oranges. The government accounting standards versus the, that's a good point. The regular accounting standards. So, if we that's go there, we and, and, and probably given the state universities and and the other entities around here that deal with Gadsby, we could find people with that skill set. But it's it's a little bit different than what you'd find uh, in the private sector. Well, that's certainly actually, as we discuss the rules, it might be uh, what what the constituency see, what the constituency of this group would be, mm -hmm. uh, defining them by their uh, credentials. Mm -hmm. so. Any other discussion on on this? So, um, it is approved. Uh, Scanlon is approved uh, for the contract succeeding this one that we've already approved. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Bill. Councillor? Uh, I think Mr. Scanlon is. Mr. Scanlon is here, but the fact is that right now, since we're no it's no it's no longer on the floor, I think he's feeling fairly confident about his prospects here that, that he doesn't need to speak, but there will come a time. Actually we we get to share some real quality time with Mr. Scanlon coming up soon enough when he presents his audit report. So uh, but I do appreciate him coming in. And the, and the contract is awarded to him. I also, Council President, would like to make a comment. I, I know we've all praised our Council Clerk. Uh, such the Administrative a, Assistant, I should point out. Whatever. Well, okay. it's important. Your Council, she's an Administrative yeah, okay. Assistant. Okay. Anyways, of her job and the great job that she's done, but I also feel we have our financial director sitting there who also should be thankful and have thanks for helping her and guiding her. I just feel that's important. I, I don't disagree. And in fact, actually, I think we did commend uh, city side of the, the, the executive side's contribution to the, and support and, uh, and Joe Cook as well. Right. Uh, they they uh, were instrumental in helping uh, Pam navigate this. I know, because right. none of us knew what to do, her either. So the guidance was there. Well, yeah. And, the, and, and it's interesting, we should point out, because part of the challenge is 
both Susan and, and Joe actually would come under the aegis of the audit and the review of the audit. So that's why it was. That's why it's critical. That's why that authority is granted the council, and the council has to do it. So we're, I've, I'm pretty confident that we're going to move forward in pretty good shape, and that's largely due, and that's almost, that's entirely due to the staff efforts. Not so much us. We we did our typical blundering fashion. And we do what we do. I knew that's, it. that's what makes it fun. Um, <clears throat> next up, we're, uh, we have the. Excuse me, the financial orders that you, you heard alluded to in Finance Committee. The first one is the financial order to reprogram funds for Jackson Street School stair repair project. And this is the first reading. I'll accept the motion. Second. <clears throat> Any further discussion on this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Lavar? Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Sorry, just getting back out of line. No, it's okay. I got it. It's a, next up is a financial order to authorize payment for prior year uh, for prior year bill of city uniforms. Uh, is there a motion? So move. Second. Any further discussion on this this item? Roll call, please. Councilor Fun. Yes. Councilor Lavarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor O'Donnell? Yes. Councilor Sarah? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Um, now, under orders and ordinances, we come up to the, the referred to uh, council rules and committee read uh, design proposal that Councilor O'Donnell crafted. Uh, included in this, w that will be forwarded to uh, the provided you vote for that referral uh, is a document that Councilor Adams had some comments and remarks. Those will also be included. That's his feedback. Um, and this, uh, the referral, hopefully, is to my preference. It's not listed here, but my preference would be used, of course, be referred to ordinance. Yeah. I would move that it be referred to rules, ordinance, orders, and. Right. Second. I make that second. If this passes, you won't have to say it all that much longer than this. <laughs> Uh, Councilor Donnelly, you want to speak to this? Um, my only question is, I agree it should go to ordinance. Not sure. Um, perhaps it should go to finance, too, if you're going to look at rules for the auditor, but um, not necessarily. I'm just wondering, is there any desire to discuss it generally first in broad strokes before we send it to a committee and, and pick it apart as it has to be? Uh, I just posed the question. It was introduced in a new business two weeks ago, and if the counselors have feedback, um, at this stage, but just a thought. If there's no appetite for that, there's no appetite. Uh, well, uh, first, I appreciate the work you did. I also appreciate the response from Councillor Adams. Um, I don't feel the need tonight to discuss it. There's only one or two items here that I would even start to have a discussion, but I'd, I'd like to kind of see what comes out of ordinance and happy to go to that meeting and discuss it there other people want to discuss a few things uh, I, I don't feel quite even prepared to discuss all of them they're just one or two items that I did feel drawn to I, and I want to say that it, first of all there is no clock ticking on this one beyond the fact that we have we want it done before the next term I think it makes the most sense the idea is and let me give you a little historical context the last time there was a major overhaul of committees and rules uh, was under uh, council president uh, Bardsley Yes. And it was the opinion of solicitor at that time that it could have been done, and it was done, in camera, not in public, because it's essentially our rules. We're deliberating. There are rules. The fact is, is my, I, first of all, I don't know if mass general law covers this, but I, my preference is to err on the side of caution and actually err on the side of, of transparency and have these rules discussed and vetted in public. The redesign and reorder was critical, particularly in, uh, following the new charter and we've we bumped up to some against some of these problems and and those were addressed in this um, we've had enough time bumbling around under the new charter with the existing rules and it's time to stop trying to cram square pegs in round holes so my hope was it would go to ordinance and it it's not a one meeting yeah. discussion I think this one that can be Maybe time can be a set aside for a few ordinance committee meetings so that you don't have to 
devote hours discussing and, and breaking this down, but allows for a, a, a more fully involved discussion. Now, the problem is, of course, and this is addressed in this new proposal, you know, if we all want to attend those meetings, it becomes problematic, then we have to announce it as a city council meeting. If but my hope is that eventually what comes back here is something that already is developed by consensus using the, uh, the very robust skeleton that, that's been crafted. Yeah, I think if the um, ordinance committee put out in their agenda which parts of the right. changes were there, because I know there were only one or two of these that I would be really interested in taking part in that discussion to ask questions, that would be helpful. Then I'd, I don't feel I would need to go to every one of those meetings. Right. Well, I'll defer to the chair on that. Okay. Well, just what I'd love to do, because our next ordinance committee meeting is going to get moved because it falls on Columbus Day, I think. So it's got to get moved around a little bit. But what I encourage everyone to do is email Pam your comments so that, you know, when we, the first meeting that we deal with it at, and the sponsor's on ordinance, so the sponsor will be there, that we have, you know, can side up, look where everybody's concerns are and sort of focus the changes and what people's feedback okay. are, and then come back and say, here's an outline of what we've heard from everybody, you know, to, because of some of the things people say, that's a great idea, we go with that, we don't really have to focus a lot of time on it. Come back with sort of a template for council discussion, but do send your if you want to send in your observations or things you support or things you don't support. We could perhaps screen, streamline the discussion a little bit, um, and and also just to follow up, we did, you know, we did do committees over greatly during the reign of Councillor Bardsley, but we also we went through it when we had the charter change because uh, our authorities changed and we revamped things a little bit at the charter change to accommodate the new. Uh, to accommodate the new charter, so right, under the administrative orders, under administrative orders. So we've we've done it a we've done it a couple of times, you know, during my tenure. But um, we've got experience now that we've gained from operating under the charter for for a while. So it never hurts to tweak them. And the difference here is this is literally a ground up redesign mm -hmm. that <clears throat> um, is a significant change, um, but clearly. <clears throat> Changes are needed there, and uh, and I, I want to again extend my deep gratitude to Councilor O'Donnell and the amount of time he's committed to this and thought and craft. And again, back to the administrative assistant who was also participating in this discussion, made some great recommendations. They've been working in concert, and then Councilor Adams, uh, actually, who originally gave us the, the the original rules that we had that have been redeveloped, and his comments relative mm -hmm. to that. So if I can invite people, I don't necessarily expect the same level of scrutiny and participation that I've just, of the people I just described, but the fact is I would love to have, as Councilor uh, Murphy said, if you could forward your comments and remarks on this item and send them to, uh, to Pam so that she can disseminate them with uh, Councilor Murphy. You're not obliged, not a homework assignment, but it'd be great to know what your thoughts are. Uh, Councilor Klein hasn't spoken yet. Uh, so procedurally, I guess I just have a question about um, at what point do, would we have a chance to just kind of hear some of the rationale for some of this? Are we waiting till, should we come to ordinance? Can we do that today? Should, will we do it after it comes back from ordinance? Because I'd like to hear some kind of broad strokes thinking behind some of what's in here. That's, uh, we can do that now if you'd like. Uh, Councilor Adams. In, in the past, it's only the past, we don't need to adhere to it, but we've actually discouraged this um, discussing yeah. something right before it goes yes. to the committee because committee, you know, for the obvious reasons, but I, I would like to, I, my preference would be to stick to that, but whatever the will of the council is. It, it is true that uh, in this, because we are talking about rules and committees that are exclusively ours, so we're, it's not necessarily a deliberative process or making law, but the fact is that I think that the um, proposer and, um, and drafter of this could speak to those points in, in ordinance in broad strokes. Um, and I have spoken with him at length, and um, his process is good. So I think you'll, you'll probably agree uh, when you hear his explanations for these things and the structure that he's designed. Um, but I agree. I think it's, I, I would much prefer that everyone have those conversations and have. I want buy-in from everybody. 
not only, I, you know, it'd be great to have a unanimous vote because we're approving the rules and then going forward these rules will have to be, rules and committees will have to be approved. Councilor Barch. I agree with you, Council President. <coughs> I feel very comfortable saying what I have to say and present what I have to say in the ordinance and that's okay. what I'm going to do. Okay. So the same, there's no exception in the open meeting law that I'm aware of to city council rules. Just want to point that out. Yeah, I, I don't know it either. It was, it was cited but this is the old open meeting laws, and, and, they, and I don't see any reason to go on camera. There's absolutely no reason to go on camera. I, think I believe it's completely illegal. You think it's illegal? Sir, I mean, I just don't, there's, I, I've never seen an exception in the open meeting law for when a city council decides to go exactly. its own rules. That said, we're not doing it anyway, so. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going down that road anyway. <laughs> so anyway, so is, we're, this is still on the referral. So uh, is everyone comfortable referring this to ordinance under the, under the uh, prescriptive order that we described with, uh, with Councilor Murphy? Okay. All those in favor of the referral, please say aye. 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 Oh. As for additional referrals, actually, it's not, I mean, uh, <coughs> only to refer to other committees as well. So should that come up, if it makes sense to refer to finance, if it makes sense to refer to any other committee that's standing, you know, right. Maybe not at this time. Yeah. No, no, I'm just saying later, as, it, as, as it's being vetted in ordinance, we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. I think that's the phrase. Is that it? it sounds, sounds appropriate. I think we cross it, we don't burn it. But uh, you, do, you, you know, you say potato, I say potato. But we, I mean, my, my thought for the ordinance process would be to take everybody's comments, come back, and then go step by step through it and say, here's the suggestions we got, here's our recommendation, and do it with a full body. So sort of a committee of the whole would do it. And I think one of the other times we did it, we did it at a special, you know, not during regular business. We had a little special meeting just for our rules because, you know, our city business goes on. Right. And this is really more about us and our procedure. So it's still done in public session, but maybe not in the middle of people needing financial orders and ordinances and everything else. We kind of did it in a posted meeting just to ourselves so we could take all the time we wanted to do it and we didn't hold up members of the public waiting for proclamations or waiting for financial orders and things like that. Councilor Down. And just very briefly, if I can just call the council's attention to um, a version of this that's essentially an amendment um, that reorganizes it, re reorganizes the proposal with a uniform numbering system. I'm not assuming this amendment will pass, but if it does, it will be a nice clean version for us to work off of. So I wanted to highlight that. It's partly at the recommendation of the administrative assistant. So thank you. Go. Okay. Go. So when when a new date for ordinance is set, could could that just be disseminated to everyone in with the anticipation that we all may want to be there? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because our meeting normally it's the the second Monday, but that hits I think Columbus Day. So we're going to have to talk about when we want to do that meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, and we still have a public hearing floating around that we have to land somewhere that we couldn't do at the last meeting. So what time of day is it usually? Usually five o'clock. <coughs> Monday. Okay. What day is he talking about? Mon the second Tuesday. Monday. Right, the second Monday is a holiday, so we have to move it this time. To Tuesday. I think we're the third Monday that the SSVCR committee we're from four October. to six. So. But we haven't we haven't even discussed when we're, we're October nineteenth. We just know we need to move it. So we're to say 19. it's the second Monday is not true next month. So we're just saying there might be a limitation for some of us right. on the third Monday because we have the SSPCR we have ours. committee. And, and the other thing we need to do is land a public hearing with the planning board, joint public hearing perhaps. So if that winds up on that meeting, we may not want to do it on that meeting because who knows how long the joint public hearings take. So we don't want to bring you in and then have it be an hour with a joint public hearing. And so we'll work on this schedule. Well, maybe. Counselor, you could do it on a Tuesday instead of yeah. a Monday. We see what's what rooms available. All right. Next up, we have the order to adopt a Mass General Law Chapter 71, Section 71E. That's the <coughs> the authorization for the the revolving fund that uh, Council Murphy. Excuse me, didn't vote. We you did. we did. Yeah. Yep. And then we had some blah, blah, blah after that. Yes. Yeah, so, so um, 
The uh, is there a motion? It's on the floor. Second. Motion made and second. Any further discussion on this item? Uh, roll call, please. We're voting on this. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. That passes in first reading. Will be reviewed at the next council meeting for second reading. Next up, this is also first reading. This is an ordinance pertaining to 24-hour parking. Uh, comes with a positive recommendation from the committee on rules, orders, appointments, and ordinances. <coughs> I'll accept a motion for us to put it on the board. Move for motion. Second. Okay. Uh, and for the for all of these, you may want Councilor O'Donnell because they came from his transportation and parking committee. He can explain them to you. I see his fingerprints all over yeah. these, so it's a. Uh, <laughs> it's it's not my commission. I just spend most of my time there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, this originally came at the suggestion of our parking enforcement officer Nancy Forrestall. Um, this eliminates in its entirety the current prohibition on parking in a municipal lot for longer than 24 hours. For several reasons. First of all. Um, it doesn't match reality. We have long-term parking that people use. Uh, people frequently park for longer than 24 hours. Um, we have return of passenger rail and less, in a, in a, at a kind of a less grandiose level, people take the bus. I mean, we need some lots for uh, multimodal transportation. And finally, um, I feel like in general, I mean, I think the thrust of the downtown parking study partly um, speaks to this, we want to get cars off streets, especially off residential streets, and we don't want to discourage the use of lots for reasonable amounts of time. So this this law that's on the books really doesn't make sense for the city anymore, so uh, we recommend striking it as a, as a commission. Is, is there a mechanism for abandoned buildings to address uh, ab abandoned buildings, abandoned cars? There is. Um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a police department practice to go around and I think after three days put a, a, a warning on a car if it looks like someone is warehousing a car in a certain place and generally I think it's three days after that you may see towing um, that kind of thing. And other things like expired registration stickers and inspection stickers probably right. give away. So. Yeah, so those mechanisms exist um, I think they're mostly administrative but every lot has its own limits you know and there's no just one 24-hour limit so any further discussion on this? This is first reading. Uh, roll call, please. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor White. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Uh, now we have an ordinance pertaining to parking on Prospect Street. This is a positive recommendation from uh, ordinance as well, and I'll accept a motion to put it on the floor. Second. Uh, motions have been made and seconded, and Councilor O'Donnell. This um, creates parking, a parking prohibited space um, next to the Survival Center on Prospect Street. You can see a picture of what this looks like. Um, the reason is that when delivery trucks, large vehicles, turn out of the Survival Center, if there's a car parked there, they have to go around, and they're essentially in the other lane, and it's dangerous. Um, through the director of central services, I was informed that the director of the survival center, I.A. Norton Smith, has no problem with the uh, creation of this parking prohibited area. Council Murphy. And in fact, there are two driveways next to each other with just enough room to put one car between the two driveways. So we're talking about absolutely one space between two driveways. And, it, and it's just a, a nuisance. Any other comments? Yes. Councilor Sheriff? Yes. Councilor Spector? Yes. Councilor Adams? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Klein? Yes. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Councilor Murphy? Yes. And last but not least, we have an ordinance pertaining to parking at the Northampton Senior Center. This also comes with a positive recommendation from ordinance. I'll accept the motion and put it on the floor. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Councilor O'Donnell. Um, again, I refer you to the picture I made with a sophisticated mapping software <laughs> called Photoshop. Um, that shows the senior center parking lot. And the spaces we propose to add in the center aisle 
um, because handicapped spaces are larger than standard spaces. If you remove four standard spaces, you get three handicapped parking spaces. Um, also, the current four spaces are not codified, so we're codifying the fact that they exist. Um, I'd like to thank Council LaBarge for her adv adv advocacy on it, and also um, Patty Shaughnessy, the Director of the Council of Aging, uh, was a big advocate for this and brought this to the Commission. Um, and there's just a, a requirement or a desire to have more handicapped parking there. Frankly, originally the request from Ms. Shaughnessy was much higher. I think she wanted six or eight spaces, but the Commission thought, you know, um, there's plenty of people who need to park close who may not have a handicapped placard. So this is three extra spaces as an initial first step. It's a reasonable increase, and I hope it will be good for the Senior Center. Any other discussion? Roy, I'm afraid not. Actually, we're in I, session, so you can't I speak. I just wanted to be recognized. So well, you can't. I I'm can so speak on this because I live there, right, and I know the. I move to recognize Roy Martin. Motions been made. Second. Second. Second to recognize Roy Martin. All those in favor of recognizing Aye. Roy Martin, please Aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. Thank you, Bill. I'm Roy Martin, 81 Con Street. Now, I live at the Walter Savile House. And when there's parking there, right now, overnight parking, a lot of times the people from the Savile House will park in one lane there. And when the people park in that one lane, uh, they're automatically towed by Ernie's towing. Uh, you know, and besides that, the senior center, I believe, is supposed to have parking space for each member of the uh, senior center. I believe when the senior center was built, that's the way it was set up for parking. And, uh, and I believe there's probably 300 people that have no parking there. Right? You know, every day there's people parking all the way around behind Con Street, behind 81 Con Street. Uh, there's not even enough space a lot of times for people that live there to park because the people from the senior center are all parking. Whenever they have a big event, people from the senior center are parked all over the city there. Uh, you know, right, if something has to be done about parking, yes, right, but what? And do you, where do you make a big parking space uh, for all of the extra people that go to the senior center? Uh, and according to state rules, you have to have one space per person that goes to that senior center that has a vehicle. So, uh, so you're speaking in objective. I'm speaking objectively to it because so many people from from 81 Town Street, right, have been towed in the middle of the night, and it costs them towing charge and everything else, right? Because they get towed because they park in the senior center. Yet when senior center people park over at 81 Town Street, right, we don't have them towed. So, right, you know, that's why I'm speaking objectively to that. Right. My, my, my point is, yeah. Roy, that you're speaking holistically about the whole parking system. Right. The whole We're parking talking system, because they're, they're talking about making six extra spaces or eight extra spaces, which is not going to amount to anything. No, they're right. actually converting existing spaces to handicapped spaces. Okay. Well, that's, that's the okay, issue. Okay. Converting them to handicapped spaces. <coughs> Correct. That's, right. that's the now, issue. So now, what are you going to do about the other space, the other places? Right, for the other people that don't have handicap. We have a lot of handicapped places at Selvo House, right, that are all taken up. And then we have a lot of handicap, uh, a lot of places that there's no handicap that people can't park because there's too many handicapped. Does anyone have any questions yeah. of Mr. Martin? Uh, Council LaBarge? Can I answer to that, please. I'm sorry? Can I answer oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I have to disagree with what I just heard as a city councilor, Roy. In regards to that they park over Walter Savos because of big functions and so forth, our director <coughs> of the social, I mean, senior services has talked with the housing authority of letting residents park over to Walter Savos. Also, they do have an agreement at the World War II Club 
when there are big functions to park their cars over there also. Um, so I just wanted to verify that. Also myself, because I go there quite a bit, I have noticed some people who come to visit at Walter Salvo park in the senior center part. And I'm talking about the opposite side where we want to put the handicap parking. They just come and park there. So that takes away a parking space also. But either which way, the director does work it out with the housing authority to cover the parking areas of what you're talking about and also with the World War II Club. The issue is we're talking about four handicapped parking spaces which we are in dire need. That I do know. So the item on the floor is not holistic and general parking right. okay. issues in the right. conflict. So that, that, and so Roy, we've strayed off the right. motion. Okay. It, it, the, the item on the floor is handicapped parking. Handicapped yes. spaces. Right. And handicapped spaces. Yes. Now, the four spaces you're talking about is uh, where, right next to the, the senior center or next well, there's, to the there's an image right, house? Or? There's an image right here. You can right. see that. Um, I'm, I'm starting to lose control of my meeting, so I, I and I'm about to. Yeah, I'd like to. Okay, the, the question's been called. So the question's been called, so there's no further discussion and debate. Uh, so, roll call, please. And this is to approve, I'm sorry, just to remind everyone, this is to approve the four handicapped spaces that were proposed in the design you saw. Thank you, sorry. Three. Three. I'm sorry, three, yes. Three. Councilor Shiro. Yes. Councilor Spector. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwayne. Oh God, yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. Clark. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Uh, I passed those in first reading, and Roy. Roy. I'm sorry. I'm not sure I voted. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. That passes the first reading. It requires another reading. So if you want more information or have comments, I would ask you to uh, offer them in, in public comment and also send your uh, comments to uh, the okay. transportation as well. Yeah, and from what I see here, right, yeah, yes, I got no objection to that because uh, mostly handicapped parking there anyways. Mm -hmm. Good news. All right. All right. Great. Good to hear. It's back to back. Okay. So, uh, I have no updates. Uh, there are information requests. Information requests. Um, any new business? Boy, oh boy, you know what we can do now? Someone can put some, a motion on the floor. So moved. Second. Second. Sure. Motion's been made. Seconded. All those in favor of the please say aye. 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 Yes. Thank you all very much. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs>